Hey citizens, welcome to 11's Hangar. Today we will be covering sub-targeting in Star Citizen 3.15.1. First, I'll show the use of sub-targeting and its practical application. Then we'll do a deep dive on the benefits of sub-targeting and some best practices. Then conclude with my final thoughts. We are now in session. Let's get to it. Keep an eye on the focus window at the top of the left corner of the screen. What you're seeing is the locations on the target ship that you can isolate your fire on. These locations will be highlighted on your target status, MFD. You will approach the target and get a closer look. Notice the effect that sub-targeting has on the target ship. Focusing our fire on the ship's engines has compromised its defenses and flight capability. Being that this ship's flight capabilities have now been removed, we have the option to engage other targets and come back to this one, or just put it down. To access or confirm your sub-targeting keybinds, go to Options, Keybinds, Advanced Controls Customization, Target Cycling. This can also be done from the Options menu in-game. For those using the Verbal Constellation Alpha, here are the keybinds that I use for sub-targeting. Now let's head to the suite. All right, well, welcome to the suite. Let's get into it. start off with the Wharton and we're going to cover the uh, positions that you saw highlighted earlier when we were sub-targeting. Say one was around here. Go ahead and link those together. Now on the screen, in the focus section, the position that showed up was kind of like that. So it was kind of difficult to see what it was that was being targeted while we were on approach. As we moved a little bit closer and had a better view, you could see the positions that we were targeting on the ship were right about there. So what I want to talk about was one of the issues that you'll run into when targeting, let's say that we target this position right here on the ship. Got that link. Okay. So that's the position that we're fire on, firing at. 
We'll do line of sight as well. Now you see how on this how on this approach we can see clearly to be able to hit the target. So what if the ship turns? Now what happens is once that position becomes out of our direct line of sight and we're still firing, our shots are going to hit the ship here, anywhere in this area. So what we want to do is we want to try to maintain holding that position so if the ship starts to go like that we need to orbit around the position that we're trying to hit because ideally what you're trying to do is cripple the ship make it so it's more difficult to fly difficult for them to fly it's more difficult for them to be able to fight back so that's what we're doing here that's the importance of the sub targeting now the other thing that we noticed was once this first portion of the ship came off, if you notice, the shields were down on that ship as well. They didn't come right back they didn't come right back up right away. So that gives you an opportunity at that point to continue by targeting the position here or to try just taking out the ship after you've done that. Its flight capability is greatly diminished. This is a really good tactic to use when you're fighting ships that are larger. Not all ships have the same points to be sub-targeted. This is an example that we're using with, with the Wharton. So for instance, let's say we can take this, we can take this for example. Now even though the shields are a lot larger and it's gonna take a lot more hits, these positions here. Here, here, and here on the Andromeda can be shot off as well. These are the main engines. They also have the main guns here. As each one of these comes off, the maneuverability and speed of the ship starts to diminish. If you get your keybinds ready for sub targeting and as you you know if you're doing boundaries or something like that or you get into a combat situation try your sub targeting to see what your options are see what things light up on what light up on the ship to kind of give you an idea of what you're able to do the buccaneer buccaneer is a good example I believe it has points here 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 and here and I believe it's a point here as well so you're talking about the intakes the main thrusters and the top gun it gives you an opportunity to slow your target down instead of just fighting you at that point once you remove one of these pieces from the ship they're fighting their ship they're fighting to maintain control and it makes it a force multiplier for you because you can still attack them and have more of an advantage the good thing about this as well is that focusing on one specific portion of the ship with, when you're going against larger ships, it allows to can keep fire on that particular shield face as opposed to, let's see, I'll give you an example here. So let's say that you shoot, you don't sub-target and you're firing at the ship. With the larger ships, I believe it's size size three shields and up. So actually, let's take let's take that out for now because that has size two, size three. Here we go. Okay. So let's say that we're hitting this region of the ship right here. That's the front shield face. And then we make a pass. The ship comes around, and granted, we're faster. So we turn around, we turn around, and we're back on target, and we start hitting the ship around here separate shield face we're actually it's kind of like starting all over again if you, if you understand what i'm saying if you hit the front let's maybe you get it down to from 25 percent to 20 20 percent and then positions change you're firing at a different point in the ship 
Now what happens is you're starting on a new shield face while this one's recharging. With a size 3 shield and a ship this large, especially if it's fully crewed with the amount of guns that it has to be able to fire back at you, you put yourself at a disadvantage because you're almost giving, the, giving your opponent time to refresh. And that's what you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give your opponent an opportunity to recoup. Especially since you have the speed with a smaller ship to be able to stay on top of them. So you want, that's why you want to use your sub targeting. It allows you to focus fire on one shield face with the larger ships to get it down and keep it down. So what I just wanted to do here was just kind of give you a representation of what it looks like. We'll bring this out one more time for you to just, one thing for you to just keep in mind. You want to make sure that you have line of sight to what you're shooting at. If you're shooting here and the ship is doing a maneuver like this and you're coming around and you see all this here you can hit, you're not hitting where you're aiming. And you consider the uh, HP of some of the, the health pool of some of the larger ships, it's wise to try to focus your fire on one position. So hopefully this was helpful. I know this the VR section of this was brief. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We can revisit this if you'd like to. You know, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about the video. And I hope this provided a benefit to you. We'll talk about a few more things in final thoughts. Sub-targeting is a vital part of combat in Star Citizen. Different weapons types have different effects on target ships, and ballistic weapons, though limited, have the greatest effect. When engines, intakes, or turrets receive damage, it can cause intermittent functionality, power loss, impaired flight, as well as many other negative situations. While this tactic can be of great benefit in an engagement, Remember that you can be on the receiving end of this as well. Even if you don't fly a particular ship, it may serve you well to at least maintain some general information about other ships in the game. And I'm certain that knowing your ship inside and out is invaluable. That concludes this session. Stay frosty, pilot, and I'll see you in the verse.